So I guess I'll start with introducing myself. So I'm Jody. Um, I'm a track and field sprinter, ranging all the way from 100 to 400 um, from Great Britain. Recently just got back from the European Championship where I got bronze in the 400 and silver in the 4x4. Summer Olympian, hopefully I'll be making this Olympic team coming up in Tokyo. Yeah, that's pretty much me. That's awesome. Uh, my sister actually plays with the Great Britain national team for basketball. No way, we're, that's so cool. Yeah, I'm, our mom's British, so we both have dual citizenship. Amazing. But, yeah, so I'm Katie Lou. I play basketball currently for the Seattle Storm and the WNBA and overseas in Spain. And, um, you know, played college basketball. This is my second year of professional basketball. And so it's been a lot of fun. I'm hoping to qualify for the three-on-three USA basketball team for this summer Olympics, but we have a qualifying tournament in May in Austria to see if we'll be able to make it in. And then I'll find out if I'm on that team. So hopefully we'll both be there. <laughs> yeah, that would be awesome. How, um, on the Olympics, that must be super different for you guys, right? Because obviously like tracks are an Olympic sport. Um, so that's kind of like our be all and end all what is like is the olympics like a a big thing for you guys is it like a big or is it more like your main season um i would say it's a big thing for me personally um i've gotten the opportunity to play with like the youth usa basketball teams u17 Mm -hmm. u16 and things like that and it's always been um like a major milestone getting to play and um being a part of that and i feel like for you know usa basketball there's so many talented amazing players that have played before and so just being able to be in that conversation and hopefully make it to the olympics that's like a huge huge deal for us so i'd say yeah it is kind of a big milestone and especially now with um they're incorporating three on three that kind of opens up even more opportunities this is my i have a big question about um obviously so your WNBA and obviously you guys so I'm usually based in the states as well last what about a year ago this time when obviously all the racial injustice stuff was really kicking off and I know the WNBA was like really at the forefront of that I mean number one how was that experience for you and like how big of a part did that kind of play in everything I feel like the WNBA Um, for the longest time has been one of the most outspoken leagues, not just this last year. I feel like they've always been on the forefront of standing up for social inequality. And um, for me being a part of, you know, such a big visual campaign for people to see how important, you know, our league stuck together and to be surrounded by so many powerful, amazing black women leading the way and like to have that and have so many people seeing that it was awesome to finally get the full recognition. I think that the league deserved. and um, you know, this summer being in the bubble, it was one of our main focuses that every game we played, everything we did, you know, that was always at the the root of it. That was always the basis behind our games, our practices, things like that. So for me, it was an incredible experience just to be surrounded by so many diverse, amazing individuals and, um, just be a part of it. And I think for the WNBA, it was nice to see finally getting the recognition because these women have been doing the work for years on years on years. For the longest, yeah. From an external point of view, I think, like you said, like the WNBA has kind of been at the forefront of uh, speaking out on injustice for the longest time. Um, But yeah, as a woman and as a black woman as well, it was super inspirational um, to see that and to see women being at the forefront of actually like standing up and speaking out. I think a lot of the time as sports people and as women, we're so often silenced and tried to like fit into that one bubble. So to actually see women speaking out on such a big stage and doing it so um, unapologetically, um, yeah, was super inspirational. I think it gave a lot of people the courage to actually stand up and speak out and step outside of that athlete bubble um, and for people to realise that, you know, like we're humans as well um, with other things going on inside our lives. We're not just these robots that just play sport. Um, So, yeah, just from my point of view, that was um, really inspirational, really great to see. Yeah, and I think, you know, for us, um, we were fortunate to get 
a bigger platform than, you know, normal and a bigger platform than a lot of Mm. other female athletes have been able to have. Like, do you feel like you in track and field, like have that platform or you feel like there's still like a lot of work to be done and being able to, you know, highlight women in track and field, black women in track and field and them to feel like they have the voice that they need to have. We're quite fortunate in track and field in that it is quite, it's separated, right, into men and women, but we're always on the same, like we're shown at the same time, right? So like whoever's watching is watching both the men and the women. They can't avoid watching either one. Um, so I feel like we're very fortunate in in that space. I would say that the biggest problem within track is that appearance is, a, as I feel like in all female sports, is definitely given a much bigger priority over our performances. Like it's always the more attractive women getting sponsorship deals or companies taking on people that are not actual athletes and kind of sponsoring like fitfluencers and stuff like that in space of an actual uh, female athlete that looks and is the part. I feel like, our, yeah, like our parents has just commented on a lot more than any male would ever have to experience. And that's definitely put at the forefront of a lot of track and field. Um, I would say that's definitely the, the biggest point of view from, from us. Um, but I do feel like it, it is slowly getting better um and I do feel like there are so many strong women within track and field that are now kind of speaking up and and making their voices known but I would definitely love to see more sports companies sponsoring women and putting like athletic looking women at the forefront of of their campaigns just so young girls can see like I think in track we're very um athletic looking right like we're yeah we're powerful women um and it would be great for that to be showcased and for like younger girls to be able to see that that's fine like it's not um an issue it's not a a thing that needs to be hidden it's something to be kind of proud of and something to aspire to even so yeah I would definitely love for for more athletic looking women to kind of be at the forefront of things rather than it being um society's view of of what is deemed kind of like an acceptable looking athlete yeah I feel like with like track and field even basketball like there's so many different like body types body strengths Mm -hmm. like things that go into every different event every different sport and it's like everyone looks different everyone has different forms of strength has different types of you know heights like it it's just needs to be shown that like it's okay that not everyone looks exactly the same and that exactly you know there are all these athletes that don't get shown that don't get highlighted because of you know that perfect image that everyone's trying to fit in and fill what were your experiences like growing up as a young girl I don't know if you've been doing I would assume you've been doing sport pretty much all your life um I know personally I experienced a lot of um yeah, just negativity around the way that I looked as a young girl growing up and especially um, when a lot of my friends started dropping out at a certain age. Like, I definitely found it um, quite diff- difficult um, to stick out visually like that. I don't know what your experiences were like kind of growing up like that. Yeah, I mean, I feel like I've been I've been very fortunate. You know, I've had people always around me supporting me. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I haven't faced a lot of backlash. Like I've had, you know, there's a lot of privilege around, you know, not having people judge your appearance as much. And I think, you know, for me, I've been able to get by with that privilege, you know, not needing, you know, everyone commenting on this, this or that, maybe because I'm tall, skinny, you know, white, like people don't, people see that and have seen that as the mold for so long that, you know, I haven't faced any of the backlash. I haven't had as much criticism as, you know, people have. And that's, that's what's sad about, you know, how people grow up and see that people of all different ethnicities, weights, heights, they grow up, but they don't see anything but what society has put forth in this small circle. And, you know, that's why like being a part of such a diverse league and having, especially recently, so many people, more and more athletes I feel like shown and you know put on 
commercials, things like that, like Chineo Gumake just did a huge commercial with DoorDash. And it's the first time that a female athlete has had uh, a commercial, I think, that's not to do with sports in like yeah, 20 that's years. Amazing. So stuff like that. It's a, It's been great to be a part of that because like, you know, you didn't have those images growing up. Like I think even me growing up, like I didn't watch professional basketball because it just wasn't shown. Like I didn't see yeah. who was in the WNBA. I didn't know who was playing. I didn't know what the players were because it wasn't visible. And I'm sure that's how it is with a lot of sports. So it's nice to see, you know, women's basketball is slowly starting to become more and more seen and more and more um, out there. Yeah, for sure. I think visibility is such a a huge thing. And like you said, just seeing a diverse range of different races, ethnicities, body types up there. And um, yeah, showing people that like there is no one standard way to look. Um, and I think the more that women's sport is, is shown, um, the better that that's definitely going to get. Um, yeah. And I think it definitely is uh, getting better and better. Um, but as always, there's still, um, still definitely work to be done. Growing up, I definitely um, definitely experienced a lot of that. I was fortunate as well that I had um, a lot of support around me in my personal bubble. Um, and that definitely pushed me to, um, to continue and, and try and break the mold on that for sure. There's a lot of things happening this summer and I'm hoping that there will be highlighted stories of athletes of people that don't necessarily have or haven't had that spotlight before with the Olympics with all that and that people really start to learn about people because it's easier to make a connection with leagues with you know different sports with different athletes when you know more about them rather than just oh here's this athlete this is what they did like it's better when you can learn you can feel connected to people and their stories. And I think hopefully that continues to happen and a lot over the next couple months. Yeah, for sure. I think that's so true. Um, Yeah, definitely. People get invested in people's journeys, right? And I think that's why um, men's sport is so prevalent because people have so much access to their stories, what they've been through. Um, They've been in the spotlight, so they've kind of seen the whole thing happen. Whereas I think with women's sports, um, a lot of the time, like you said, it's just either an Olympics or like the big event at the end that they see. Um, And there's really been no visibility in the run up to that. So people aren't um, yeah, invested. They haven't had a chance to get involved in the story and and find athletes to to back. Um, I I think, like you said, um, with this with this summer and a, a lot of sport coming up and I think with more and more conversations being opened and people realizing that women's sport really needs to be highlighted. I think people can definitely, um, yeah, buy into the story a lot more, follow people's journeys, um, really get behind female athletes and realize that, you know, what we're doing is exactly the same as the men. Um, sport is sport. Um, and our journeys are all, yeah, the same people can um, definitely invest in us too and and see that, yeah, we're killing it at the top of our game as well. And I think we've seen more and more that people watch when women are on TV, like women's sports are yeah. shown and it's just not being shown. That's why people aren't seeing it. Mm-hmm. And so like, like WNBA, all that, like the viewership was way up and it's like, because we're getting more visibility and that's with all women's sports it's like people want to say people don't watch it but it's just not shown there's nowhere to see for sure female athletes competing every single day yeah definitely and that's it right like there's definitely accessibility to men's sports every day on a variety of different channels wherever you want to watch it there's a a a feed for everything pretty much Um, and I think you like you said like as all we need is visibility. Um, people will buy into it and people do buy into it. Like we've definitely seen um, the evidence of that. Um, and yeah, I hope that that continues and that visibility definitely continues. And yeah, I think that also opens doors for us commercially as well. You know, obviously the more visibility we have and the more people buy into what we're doing, that opens doors for women all over the world. And that just feeds back into young girls being able to see sports mentors and that will only uh, 
it's just a cycle of positive things. Like only good things can can come from more visibility. Yeah, young girls definitely need role models that they can see and they can see themselves in. Um, mm -hmm. And the more visibility that that we have, you know, the more participation hopefully girls sports will get. And yeah, it can only be up from there really. Especially with like the now with the social media and everything, it's like all I can't imagine growing up right now because all these young girls see is like this idea of perfection at all times mm -hmm. and all you know, you're scrolling through Instagram, you see all these influencers and Instagram models yeah. and stuff like that to just makes you feel bad about yourself if you're thinking that this is real life and it's like you know being able to see women in sports being able to see strong women with muscles like things that yeah you know you don't necessarily see scrolling through an instagram feed on your explore page it's like i hope that you know being able to see different types of athletes different types of women can you know help younger generation not feel like they have to be a certain way or fit a certain mold and just help overall with, you know, low self-esteem and things like that. That's so prevalent today and leads to a lot of different types of mental health issues, people feeling so bad about themselves and feeling like they have to be in a certain way at all times. Yeah, a hundred percent. And on top of that, seeing exercise as something that is healthy um, rather than, you know, I feel like a lot of with social media, a lot of exercise these days is to try and lose weight, look a certain way, fit into this mold. Um, and I feel like it's so important for these girls to see like sport and exercise. Number one is so good for your mental health. Um, just getting out there and doing a sport, being around other people, being encouraged is a huge thing for mental health. And two, like it's, it's healthy, like, doing exercise is just a healthy thing for you to be doing you don't need to meet a certain um weight goal or look a certain way or be doing things just to, for an aesthetic reason um yeah. and yeah I think it's super important for for girls to be able to see like you said women with muscles and women that are strong and healthy and look a different way and it's not all um yeah about fitting into this one very Instagram look which isn't real um like you said scrolling through instagram can make you feel so bad about yourself um especially with all these filters that just perfect everything um it's just so far from um reality uh and yeah i can't even imagine being a, a young girl going through those teenage years um and really struggling like you said with self-esteem issues um must be really 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 tough growing up in in this age and yeah it's definitely important for for girls to be able to see something a little bit different yeah yeah and I think you know you get in the habit of seeing what you believe is real and you know even for athletes I think like for me my clearly I don't put you know bad days necessarily on my Instagram like I'm yeah. not putting a picture of me crying out there. I know some people that feel confident and do that to let people know that, you know, we all have bad days, but it's like, you see these athletes, you see these people that have in your eyes, like, Oh, these great lives is every day is a good day. And it's, it's important for people to understand that, like we said, like social media is not real all the time. Like it's just portrays what you want to show to the world and everyone wants to show yourself in a good light. And so yeah. like, athletes you know we have these low days and people need to know that that's okay and that's part of the journey and that's part of what um, makes us all human like we all have issues we have to deal with we all have different things that we cope with and so um, for young girls to know that like it's okay if you're going through some bad things but we all have that <laughs> Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, um, yeah, Instagram is a highlight reel, right? Um, like you said, um, people aren't, I mean, there are some very brave people out there that, that do put their bad days up there, like you said, but people aren't posting that every day. Um, and I think that's the other thing um, with athletes is we are, we post our success, right? But we don't always post the journey and the, um, the hardships that come with that, like success is not a 
linear journey by any means. Um, I know me personally, I've had a bunch of ups and downs, a bunch of downs for sure. Um, and yeah, it's a struggle. We all struggle um, for sure. And it's definitely something that I'm trying to be a bit more conscious of is sharing more of those downs. So like you said, people can see that it's not all stars and rainbows all of the time and it's not all winning. Um, there's a lot of hard work and grind and there's a lot of down days and, and disappointment within, within that journey to success. Um, and it's definitely about staying the course, number one, um, and yeah, embracing that life isn't isn't perfect um, by any shape or form. Um, and yeah, I feel like girls, young girls especially, need to need to know that and need to see that that not everything is um, yeah always smiles and, and medals. There's definitely a lot of highs and lows that that come with that. Um, and yeah, stay the course as you know, role models as female athletes, like really help in any way we can, like reduce that stigma around mental health as it being, you know, a bad thing or being something like, don't talk about that. If you have issues, like, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. And there's nothing to be ashamed of. I know that I've had um, the opportunity to be able to share a little bit of my journey. And by just doing that, I've had been able to have so many conversations with people with young girls with teams that you know I never would have been able to have before and people would have never been able to feel comfortable enough to come tell me you know that they mm. aren't feeling great and it's like you know we have a responsibility almost to just make sure that we are helping in any way we can absolutely and I think like it's a conversation right and it is I think opening that conversation is definitely the hardest part. But once it's opened, like you said, like people um, start to come to you. Yeah. As role models, like I think it's very important for us to um, open up about our experiences um, and yeah, open up those conversations. I think like you, I've tried to be as, as open as possible and, and speak up about, about my journey as well. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, it definitely opens up those doors and if I can make one person feel comfortable or see themselves in that journey and, and it makes them or helps them to speak up, then I feel like I've at least done something. Um, but yeah, for sure, I think opening up that conversation and for people to understand that it's absolutely okay to feel this way. Um, it's absolutely okay to speak about it. In fact, it's important to speak about it. It's important to tell someone um, there is no stigma around it. Um, yeah, it's super important to, to open up, get help, have those conversations. And like you said, I think as, as, um, people that have a, a following or, um, are kind of in the public eye, it's definitely important that we can start opening up those conversations and hopefully help someone along the way for sure.